What's up, my fellow Shield Brothers? Shield Brothers 6 here with your weekly dose of history. Today, we're going to be taking a step back in time as we talk about a day in the life, the kit, and the armament of a normal Roman soldier in the legions. The Personal Equipment Roman military personnel equipment was produced in large numbers to establish patterns that depended on what period of the empire they were in and what region of the empire they were in. And it was always used in an established way that was unitary throughout the entire empire. These standard patterns and uses were called the res militaris or disciplinia. Its regular practice during the Roman Republic and Roman Empire led to military ex excellence and victory. For instance, Roman equipment, especially armor, gave them a very distinct advantage over their barbarian enemies. This does not mean, however, that every Roman soldier had better equipment than the men among his enemies and his opponents. For instance, that doesn't always mean a Celt isn't going to have as good an armor as a Roman, although it usually was the case. The Adaptations of the Empire In Edward Lutwick's The Great Strategy of the Roman Empire made in 1979, Lutwick states that the Roman weapons far, were far from being universally more advanced and were frequently inferior to those used by their enemies. Initially, they used weapons based on Greek and nutrition models. On encountering the Celts, they based new varieties of Celtic equi equipment. To defeat the Carthaginians, they constructed an entire fleet, the Novo, based on the Carthaginian model. Once a weapon was adopted, it became the standard. The standard weapons varied somewhat during Rome's long history, but the equipment and its use were never individual. It was always the same for the entire army. And top you can see the four types of the gladius used by the Romans. The Hispanius, which they got when they conquered Spain, the Mains, the Fulham, and the Pompeii model, all named after where they were found and used. The Infantry Overview Vegetus, the 4th century author of De Remitari, described the equipment he believed had been used by heavy and light infantry earlier in the empire. The names of some weapons have been changed from Latin to the Greek forms and Greek names have been preferred. For an unknown reasons, perhaps it is believed that because the center of Roman military power had shifted from Rome to Constantinople. Here's his translation. And if you want to go ahead and pause the video and read that, because I don't want to have to read the entire thing for you, but it goes along detailing the infantry, the normal manned infantry, and how it was used and the different usages within it and armor and weaponry, such as the type of helmets, shields, swords, broadswords, and everything you would like to know about that. So if you want to read that, go ahead and pause there. The weaponry. Here's the personal armament. The Pugio, a Pugio was a dagger used by Roman soldiers, very good at punching through male armor. It was a probably a sidearm, it's believed, and it was generally had a large leaf-shaped blade, 18 to 28 centimeters long, and 5 centimeters or more in width. The Gladius. The Gladius is the general Latin word for sword, as I said in the last slide, if you want to go back and look at those types of Gladiuses. The two primary kinds of swords are known as the Mains Gladius and the Pompeii Gladius, which follows the Mains type, which itself had followed the Hispanius. The spears and javelins are hastae. The hasta, hasta is a Latin word meaning a thrusting spear. Hastae were carried by early Roman legionaries, Camillin. In particular, they were carried by and gave their name to those Roman soldiers known as hastate. However, during Republican times, the Hastati were rearmed with Pila and Gladi, and only the Triarii still used Hastai. The Javelin. Although Romans often used the word Pila to refer to their own throwing javelins, the term Pilum also means specifically the heaven Roman throwing javelin of the legions. However, lighter, shorter javelins existed, such as those by the Belites and early legions. You can see the Pila top right. Uh, bottom right, sorry, on top, and the bottom one is the heavier one. The projectiles. The bow was used. The Sagittarius was armed with the bow, the Arcus, shooting an arrow, Sagittai, with a composite bow, made of hornwood and sinew, held together with a hide glue. However, Vegetus, the author from earlier, recommended training recruits with Archibus Liginius, which were solid wooden bows. The dart was also used as late infantrymen often carried half a dozen lead-weighted throwing darts called 
plumbati, from plumbum meaning lead, which is an effective range of roughly 30 meters, well beyond that of a javelin. The darts were carried clipped to the back of their shields. The Armor of the Legionaries The torso armor, the Lorikai Segmentite, the, was a type of segmented body armor primarily used in the early Roman Empire. This is the armor that you see in all the movies, all the video games. They've got the metal sheet length segmented and tied together by leather on top of their red tunics or white tunics. This is the one you see everywhere. This is the common, the common accepted idea of what a Roman legionary would look like. Although the Lorica Hamatai was a type of male armor used during the Roman Republic, continuing all the way through the Roman Empire as a standard issue armor for the primary heavy infantry legionaries and secondary troops, the auxiliaries. They were mostly manufactured out of iron, although sometimes bronze was used instead. It was that during the early set you had the segmented, but then as Rome expanded and started to run out of resources and started getting more and more men and secondary forces that they switched over to their male armor. Although the Lorica Squimatai, a type of scale armor, was also used during the Roman Republic in later periods at the same time as the male armor. So you might see male or you might see scale armor if you were to look back at the Roman legions of those times. The shields. This is the Parma. The Parma was a circular shield, three Roman feet across. It was a smaller than most shields, but was strongly made and regarded as effective protection. This was Due to the use of its iron in its frame, it had a handle and a shield boss called an umbo. If you look at the early Roman Republic and very early Roman Kingdom, and when you look at what the Falmax looks like when they're in it, this is when they have the circular shields. The Parma was used in the Roman army of the Mid-Republic by the lowest class division of the army, the Vilites. The Vilites' equipment consisted of a Parma, a javelin, a sword, and a helmet. Later the Parma was re replaced by the Scutum. The Scutum was a type of square shield used among italic peoples of the Archaic period, which is the one that you also see with the segmented armor in all the documentation and adaptations of movies and video games. The Romans ad adapted this when they switched from the military formation of the hoplite phalanx, as I was saying, of the Greeks, to the formations with the meniples, the many different types. See, it started out with the phalanx, where you were just shield wall and spears against shield walls with spears. But as they started conquering other peoples, they had to start changing them up, what they were using and how they were using it. So that's when they changed out their spears and sword for the square shield with a sword instead of a spear. And due to this is how they were able to conquer people by adapting it with different types of weaponry and usages. The legions, as you can see here, the legions, this was an, an honor, and it's how you would get your citizenship usually and land. And as I showed, there were many different types of armor and weaponry used throughout the ages, and that's why Rome was such a unique place, because they adapted. Everyone thinks, oh, Rome conquered because they had better armor, better weaponry, and better leadership. Leadership that is possible, but as for armor and weaponry, usually not. Usually they got that way because of the people they conquered and adapted to. When they fought Carthage, they didn't just get ships, they copied the ships of the Carthaginians. When they fought Hannibal, they fought Hannibal by adapting into using different formations of armor and military tactics. And when they fought the Greeks, same thing, they used different phalanxes. So that's why the legions were such a unique type of military power because of their power to adapt and attack. Divide and conquer, if you will. As always, thank you for watching. This has been Shield Brother 6 with your weekly dose of history. If you like this content, please leave a like. If you don't, go ahead and leave a dislike. If you have a comment or a suggestion, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll catch you next time.